The best VR headsets can make you forget, even if just for a moment, you're wearing a big chunk of plastic and foam on your face. It will make you feel like you're a part of a game's world, if only until you walk into your sofa. We've tested dozens of models, from the most popular to the most obscure, and the best VR headset is the MetaQuest 3. It's not just that it's relatively affordable, it's one of few truly new-feeling VR headsets right now. Its older sibling, however, is the best budget VR headset, the MetaQuest 2. If money is no object and you're just looking for the most high-end, best-resolution VR headset out there, the Valve Index is the closest thing to having a holodeck in your office. While we'd love to see an upgraded model out of Valve, the Index still holds up really well. If you can get it at a good discount, even better. We have listed the best VR headset 2024, and there are key features you need to consider this to help you choose the best one for you. For more information on the product, as always, I've included a link in the description box down below, which are updated with the best prices on each product. Like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned till the end so you don't miss anything. Now let's get started. Number 5. HTC Vive Pro 2 Despite my qualms about tripping over cords, PC-tethered VR is still going strong, as seen in the excellent Valve Index. Before the Index, though, Valve partnered with HTC to produce the first VVVR headset to work with the Steam VR platform. The two companies parted ways on VR development, with HTC vying for much more enterprise and development attention with its Focus and Pro Eye headsets, while Valve released the Grip Sensing Index. HTC isn't out of the consumer VR game, however, with its middling but functional Vivi Cosmos headset and its new Vivi Pro 2. Despite its name, the Vivi Pro 2 is intended for both professional VR and consumers, offering the same Steam VR compatibility as the Valve Index along with HTC's own Vive port ecosystem. On one hand, it offers some of the highest resolution and keenest visuals we've seen in a consumer-available VR headset. On the other hand, it's by far the priciest at $799 for only the headset, requiring a sizable extra spend for the base stations and controllers it needs to work. The Vive Pro 2 headset looks like a darker version of the Vive Pro, and not too dissimilar from the Vive Cosmos. It's black rather than blue, but otherwise shares a nearly identical design. The front panel combines the original Vive's nubby points, which the base stations use to track position with the Viva Cosmos front-facing stereo cameras, which the headset uses to track surroundings. That headset section can be pushed forward or backward against the face mask part with the press of a button on the lower left corner, letting you adjust the distance between the lenses and your eyes to improve focus. A knob on the front panel's lower right area lets you tweak pupillary distance, how far apart the lenses are horizontally to best align with how far apart your eyes are. The head harness features the same design as the Viki Pro, a three-point system with wide plastic arms on the sides and a wide strap on the top. The back of the harness is heavily padded and features a dial for tightening that section against the side arms, while the top strap can be manually adjusted with Velcro fasteners. A pair of on-ear headphones are built into the headset, connected to the harness sides by their own plastic arms. The arms rotate forward and backward to align the ear cups with your ears, and flip in and out to let you listen to your surroundings. The left ear cup has a volume rocker on the back edge, and the right ear cup has a mic mute button. The microphone is built into the front section of the headset, not the ear cups. The headphones can be removed and replaced, but there is no headphone jack to simply use your own. Number 4. Pico 4. Powered by the same Snapdragon XR2 processor as the MetaQuest 2, the Pico 4 is an incredible contender for the entry-level VR throne. There's so much to like here, with every spec seeming to one-up its main competitor, and for less cash. Though, inevitably, there's a catch for would-be Pico 4 users on the US side, availability. In the UK, you can get hold of the Pico 4 for £380, 20 monies less than the new Quest 2 price tag. The 256GB version sits closer to Meta's higher tier offering at £430. Compare that to the similarly specced mid-range HP Revo G2 going for £655 even today, and it becomes abundantly clear that the standards are shifting in the VR space. You can get so much more for your money than Apple would probably have you believe, as Byte Dance proves with the stunning Pico 4. The major drawback for most of our readers is that the Pico 4 isn't available to US users. Any Amazon listings you might see will sit at around $800, 
often with another $100 on top for international shipping. I would not recommend my North American friends pay that much for the Pico 4, but for those countries with availability, put on your bibs because Bite Dance is serving pancakes. That's pancake lenses to be precise, the inedible kind. This lens tech involves folding together loads of lenses in a curved shape for some light-based magic and frees up some processing power as the headset doesn't then have to digitally fix the distortion you find within standard Fresnel lenses. Granted, it does mean a smaller field of view, but I'm more than happy to forfeit a little peripheral vision for the privilege. Couple such a technological marvel with that 4320x2160 resolution, and Pico 4 has the best visuals of any entry-level headset I checked out. Compared to the MetaQuest 2's Fresnel lenses, those pancakes taste pretty sweet. Along with a much less prominent screen door effect, meaning the pixel grid can't be seen easily when you press your eyeballs against the glass, it's also less prone to chromatic aberration and ghosting issues. Essentially, it's a much sharper, clearer viewing experience, especially when it comes to menus and the like. Number 3. MetaQuest Pro The MetaQuest Pro may not be the best VR headset we've ever tested. That title belongs to the more affordable MetaQuest 3, with Apple Vision Pro coming in a close second. But if you're a mixed reality power user, this is a solid choice. Professionals, scientists, and creatives can make the most of this tool for online collaboration in real time. If you fit into that niche, you'll love it. Its mixed reality features really helped jumpstart a shift away from pure VR we see in the Quest 3. After spending some time going hands-on, or in this case, heads-on, with the Quest Pro, I've seen the device's potential firsthand. Even in a relatively brief amount of time, it's clear why being in a virtual office and collaborating with virtual representations of your colleagues could be appealing. Some people may even prefer meeting in the virtual world rather than being a talking head in a box on video calling apps like Skype or Google Meet. But currently, most people haven't made the switch to working in the metaverse. That means if you want to work in VR, you are going to be an early adopter and may not find it lives up to its full potential. That's a big ask when the headset costs $1,499. Note, the Meta Quest Pro is now $999, rather than the $499 price point for the Quest 3. And frankly, it may be too big an ask for most people. Read on to find out why. When it was originally reviewed, the Meta Quest Pro cost $1,499 slash $1,499 pounds slash $2,000. $499 AU from Meta's online store. However, the Quest Pro is now just $999 and has been for a while. It appears to be a permanent price reduction. Though Meta has yet to make an official announcement, we will update this review if it goes back to $1,499. If you don't want to buy the Quest Pro from Meta, you can also buy it from Amazon and Best Buy. With the purchase of the Quest Pro, you get the headset, two Meta Quest Touch Pro controllers, stylus tips for the controllers, partial light blockers, and a charging dock. That all comes included regardless of the retailer. There are also a number of accessories for the Quest Pro available. This includes the MetaQuest Pro Compact Charging Dock, $79, MetaQuest Pro VR Earphones, $49, the MetaQuest Pro Carry Case from Incase, $119, and MetaQuest Pro Full Light Blocker, $49. Number two. PlayStation VR 2. This week marks exactly one year since the launch of the PS VR 2 on February 22, 2023. I'm a day one adopter of Sony's second generation virtual reality headset. I fork over $599 of my hard earned cash to purchase the five pounds accessory as soon as it hit store shelves. And after spending a full 12 months with the PS VR 2, I've got pretty mixed feelings overall. I certainly experienced some highs like my very first time using the headset and being hugely relieved that my biggest issue with the PS VR1 had been resolved, but I've also found myself using it pretty infrequently over the last few months. However, this could be blamed on the Meta Quest 3 as I can't tear myself from Quest exclusive Asgard's Wrath 2. The PS VR 2's first anniversary is a great chance to take stock of the situation. While the Apple Vision Pro is sucking up all the oxygen in the room right now, there's still a lot to admire about Sony's gaming-focused virtual reality device. It's just a shame it comes with a pretty major caveat that I'm not sure will be resolved anytime soon. As we said in our PS VR 2 review, 
the PSVR 2 is an excellent way to get access to high-end VR without needing to buy a gaming PC. Behind its simple setup lies a very impressive virtual reality system, and that verdict still rings very true to this day. The PSVR 2 is a seriously slick piece of tech. Its OLED display delivers an impressive per-eye resolution of 2000x2040, making in-game visuals look sharp and crisp. I also cannot speak highly enough of its laser-sharp tracking. The four built-in cameras observe my movements without a hitch, and the whole system is a massive upgrade from the OG PSVR's light-based tracking, which I found to be pretty unreliable. I'm also a huge fan of the PSVR 2 Sense controllers. These org-shaped controllers not only look the part, but are extremely comfortable to hold and feel significantly more sturdy compared to the Quest 3's flimsy paddles. Sturdiness might not sound like an especially key feature, but trust me when you're flinging your arms around during an intense session of Beat Saber, you want controllers that won't step out of your grip. Number 1. MetaQuest 2 The Oculus Go headset was the company's first foray into standalone virtual reality, but it didn't really nail a genuinely immersive, cable-free VR experience until the Oculus Quest. Then Facebook purchased Oculus, and now both are under the Meta umbrella. The MetaQuest 2 formerly Oculus Quest 2, follows in the footsteps of its predecessor, but improves upon the experience with a more powerful processor, a sharper screen, and a lighter design. It offers all of this for $299.99 and remains significantly more affordable than competitors like the HTC Vive Cosmos, $699, and the Valve Index, $999. Add optional PC tethering with an accessory cable to the mix, and you have a comprehensive and accessible VR system that's worthy of our Editor's Choice Award. The Quest 2 is a bit smaller and lighter than the original. It weighs 17.7 .7 ounces and measures 4.0 by 7.5 by 5.6 inches HWD, not including the strap. The smooth plastic chassis of the headset is white, while the plastic and foam eye masks behind it are a contrasting black. The front faceplate is nearly bare except for the four position tracking cameras along its edge. The left side of the headset houses a USB-C port and a 3.5mm headphone jack, while the right side is home to the power button and an indicator LED. A volume rocker sits underneath the headset, along with two pinhole microphones. The eye mask easily pulls out so you can adjust the position of the lenses or insert a separator that lifts the headset slightly away from your face to accommodate glasses. Even with the separator, however, glasses can make the experience feel awkward if you have particularly large frames. The headband is a three-point elastic strap that stretches across plastic arms and can pivot slightly up and down. The arms house speakers that pike sound into your ears without headphones. The top strap connects to the headset with hook and loop Velcro fasteners thus letting you adjust how the top of the Quest fits against your face. The side straps connect at the back with two plastic sliding clips. It's fast and simple to adjust the headset with the default strap, but it doesn't provide the most secure fit and can shift if you move your head quickly or sharply. You can replace it with the Quest 2 Elite Strap, a $49 accessory that provides a more secure fit. That add-on features a ring-shaped piece of plastic that cups the back of your head as well as a ratcheting wheel that keeps the strap locked in place. 